brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. Mornings at the Cabin, indeed. Wheeler, AJ, and Lecter, Ollie. Phil, in seclusion, deep in the recesses of the Amber Mountains in Yellowknife. Um, but uh, as always, bringing you everything you need to know on a day-to-day basis. Took Saturday off, though, which was nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. About time he had a day off. No doubt. Although, I mean, admittedly, like, he's working really hard. I mean, it's on a couch. Yes, I, I was serious. Right, it's true. Yes. No, yeah. Yeah. no, I was I wasn't being serious. sarcastic. I was being sarcastic. Sorry if it sounded But you like were that. being. No, I wasn't. Oh, you weren't. No, no, no. Were you being? Sorry, hold on. Is he working hard or is he not working hard? No, he's working very hard. <laughs> okay, good. We're glad he took a day off. At the same time, he's working from his couch. From the so comfort there's... of his own home. <laughs> right? I see. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if you're on a couch or in the bed, a 12-hour day is still a 12-hour day. Yeah. Just but a little bit more comfy. But... A little bit more comfy. He's got a little bit after. But... Yeah. Just because it's a, his ideal work day. Yeah. Doesn't mean he's not working hard. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Just because he said repeatedly <laughs> that this is how he loves to work <laughs> and he doesn't want to work any other way. And he may never again. He may never again. He, we, sa- he said it. He said that I, he's out of isolation, I think, now? Now, yeah. Now? No, wait. Yeah. Uh, no, they no. say it, April 2nd. April 2nd. Yeah, because he still well, has a cough. cough. That's right. So he's got a few more days in isolation. Yeah. But he said after that, he's like, I don't He's just going to keep coughing forever. I mean, <laughs> might as well. Yeah. Might as well. You know. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's going to be the great excuse moving forward now, even as social isol- uh, social distancing, or pardon me, physical distancing, Thank you. becomes uh, less of a thing. Like someone's going to call up and just be like, hey, we can finally get together. You, you, you down? You down? You'd be like, uh, uh, I don't know. I should stick around for... for take 14 days here. Better monitor for a little <laughs> bit. Not to make anything light of this situation, but that will happen. Oh. It, it will. It we will are the worst. <laughs> we are literally the worst if Tiger King is any indication... Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. Happy Monday, everybody, or as you know it now, in isolation, day. Um, morning to everybody. Uh, 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 you know, Emily Blick, our newest reporter, put up a uh, put up an article uh, yesterday, I believe, on CabinRadio.ca, uh, talking about the theater. Now, if you've driven by the theater in the last couple of weeks, closed on March 18th, so it's been closed for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And they said, don't you forget about us, no, 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 on the sign, right? right. So kind of... Um, uh, the the simple mind song from yes. uh, so obviously whoever whoever put up the sign the favorite movie of all time is Breakfast Club yeah and, and there you go yeah Chris so, Wood I think that was I it was that Chris, is his favorite Chris, movie that does make sense Chris I I feel like Chris identifies with um, uh, what's his tag in that movie what's <laughs> could, his, you, could you be more specific that guy you know the dude the guy Emilio? in the movie no no not Emilio I bet he identifies more with Judd Hirsch not Judd Hirsch Judd Nelson oh, Judd okay. Hirsch. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, a little bit. But um, what is his name in that movie? I don't know. You've seen Breakfast Club. I have, but I don't remember anyone's Have name. you seen Breakfast Club? Well, I just Club. talked yeah. about how this I don't remember any generation. This is a generational thing. Like It used to play on TBS every Saturday. I remember right. my parents talking about Breakfast Club. <laughs> oh, God, I hate you so much sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is his name? Damn it. Anyway. I can see that, um, but it, br- it brings up the bigger issue of, so basically what the article is about is supporting the theater once it reopens, right? Yes. So we've talked about supporting small business, so it's something you could do if you do want to support the theater is, you know, buy some gift certificates. There's probably a mechanism to do that, maybe message them on Facebook and see if you could buy some gift certificates and things like that. Um, it brings up the bigger issue of what's going to happen to cinemas as, as this thing kind of passes. So in China, in, uh, in the Wuhan, in Hubei province, uh, uh, they closed down all the theaters. Yeah, right. And they closed all the theaters across the country. Mm. They're just like no large gatherings, no no movie theaters. On Friday or Thursday, I believe they started opening some back up. Or over the past week, they started opening some back okay. up. Okay. And then Shanghai uh, had a had a plan to open 250 more this week. On Friday or Saturday, it, they were told by the Chinese government shutter them all down within 48 hours. Within 48 hours. Yeah. So that was a big, and I remember sending out the message to you guys, and all these, all these reaction was ish. He was like, "Oh, and because that's a, 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 a kind of a, you know, it's a, it's, it's not a great thing. It's not, no. it's not a great uh, sign that things are going well in China. Um, they are a, a, a worried about a second kind of outbreak, right? Yeah. Mm. So yeah. they shut them all down. They're being very careful, as is everybody except the states. Um, <laughs> they're just willy nilly, whatever. Um, so it brings up the bigger issue of what's going to happen to cinemas as we come back. Because, I mean, a lot of people, even as we kind of take away so, uh, physical distancing and things like this, and we kind of get things back to normal, are people still going to go out in large droves yeah. to movie theaters? Because movie theaters uh, sometimes can be a little gross, right? Mm. There's garbage everywhere. There's people, like, uh, sipping drinks out of straws and putting them back in, in things. And there's just, it's, there's yeah. a lot of 
germ transfer when it comes to theaters, it yeah. would seem. Um, Chris so, made a good point in the article, too. Yes. He even said uh, there was going to be a lull between blockbuster movies because yeah. they've stopped production. Yes. Right. So there's going to be months and months where there's no like big, big name movies coming out. Big, movies. They call so it, yeah. he's saying, like, when we open... Please come back and just watch some movies, watch please, movies. Absolutely. because we're going to have a lull no matter what. Yeah. And I know Chris, and I know a lot of people put the blame on Chris for how the theater looks and it's, and it's, and the way it's run and things like that. Like, oh, okay. you mean the character? The, yeah, no. Cause that's my favorite part about us. The, the character. It's got a lot of character. That's right. It's got a lot of character. <laughs> that character is at least 20 years old. Um, it's the same it was when I was part of the new staff after the first renovation. The, the character is um, a grumpy old man. <laughs> the character is a grumpy old man <laughs> with a broken hip. Um, it just smells. Just, <laughs> so maybe, uh, and maybe something good comes out of that where Chris can finally kind of get some of that support from who magic lantern theaters or whatever, who owns it. And yeah. Magic <laughs> lantern. Is that something really? like that. It's theaters? like magic lantern or something. I can't remember. Like Cineplex. I, no, it's not Cineplex. No. Okay. no if it's Cineplex Odeon, it wouldn't look like that. the profits from green. Lantern. I mean, it, the profits it, from green. Lantern. It might still, it might still. <laughs> so maybe there's, maybe some cleaning comes up after that because you're going to have to, you're going to have yeah. to deep clean the entire thing. For sure. New spot of paint. Obviously is going to make everything look better. Yeah. So, you know what, what an easy, easy thing to do if, like, if you still want to go to the theater once we're allowed to be in yeah, big gatherings again and, and not worry about what's been done by the staff there yeah. is just if we had, like, some kind of, like, seat covers, it sounds weird, but putting, like, a little bit of plastic over your seat, I know it's not normal. Just get rid of all it's, the seats. <laughs> You it's, ditch all the seats to bring like, a camping chair. It sounds like a pain in the ass is what it sounds I mean, like. Maybe you just bring like one of those those cheap plastic <laughs> rain ponchos. Oh, yeah. You put those over your seat. <laughs> Drape you a garbage bag. And then if you spill, yeah. it's fine. Welcome to the movies. Enjoy your show. Don't forget to grab your garbage bag put over the seat. <laughs> You know, I mean, I've been to some Jesse, theaters. this is a different world. The world has changed. That's right. right. I've been you to some. Just got yeah. to accept Here, it. Here's the same thing that, and, <laughs> that New York nurses are using. It's a garbage bag. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I've been to theaters though where you want to put a garbage bag over the seat every time yeah. you sit in it. So you can, I mean, you I can I've, fancy it up yeah. if you want. Call it a splash guard. That's right. Oh, Ooh, yeah, it really <laughs> works too. I've been splashing all over the place. Um, but I mean, I I mean the the, the theaters, the, movie theaters, especially our one, are going to need that support when, once we get kind of back to normal yeah. because it costs a lot of money to run a movie theater, and movie yeah. theaters mm-hmm. don't make a ton from ticket sales at all. Yeah. They make it, that's, why, that's why when you go to Cineplex, getting a, a couple of popcorns and a couple of pops costs you $40 yeah. because that's where they make their money. It's not bad here. It's not bad here at all. Yeah. I mean, it sounds weird to say a large popcorn and a large drink costing 10 bucks isn't yeah, oh, too that's, bad. That's but that's good. not too that's bad. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I don't mind that at all. I, always I would home. like some real butter topping. That's, I don't that want free? that. F- it's not. Or is well, that extra? That's fake butter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're, we we digress. No, okay. um, it's the so details. It's I wanted to ask things. you guys what do you what do you guys think? Are you still going to go to the movies? Not that you go to the movies very often now, but yeah, I don't I do, go actually. a ton. You do? Yep. I, I'm kind of I, I'm inclined to go almost for the sport of it because I'm frankly I'm for the surprised. Sport. Well, frankly, I'm surprised that movie theaters have lasted this long. Really? Well, we went through that whole era of you know like when when you suddenly could download movies at home and yeah. everyone was like, oh my god, I'm just gonna do this like whether they were doing it legally yeah. or illegally, and then you know giant TVs became so disposable and yeah. so cheap and easy to buy. Everyone had a big home theater setup, mm-hmm. and there was a time when you know like ten, fifteen years ago when people thought that theaters days were numbered anyway. Yeah. Like, no one was going to leave their house to yeah. go watch a movie with a bunch of, you know, potentially other loud people who are, you know, leaving their phones on like idiots oh, yeah. and talking well, on the sure. phone in the middle of the movie and making noise and blah, blah, blah. But theaters have persevered. So yeah. I'm shocked that it's lasted this long. And now I, I'm kind of on the team where I just, I want to see how far this can go. Well, and a lot of people think this this is kind of like the death knell for theaters because now ma- major movie studios are saying, okay, we well, can't go to the theater. We're going to release this movie that just came Early. out a week ago online mm. so you've got things like onward the new pixar movie just opened two weeks ago is already online for you to stream yeah other movies coming out for, for streaming probably for the next couple of months just going to go direct to stream uh there's also a program in place in the states where if you buy something at a stream you can pick which theater you're supporting yeah so you, you oh, go, that's cool you're like oh i'm gonna go i'm gonna watch onward at my house and i'm gonna support alamo draft house in austin i'm gonna pay for tickets right. exactly yeah, yeah. basically okay. so i mean a lot of people kind of calling it this this could be the death knell for for movie theaters as well, well and then you got the major streaming services and the number Absolutely. of big movies that are coming out Absolutely. on those platforms you, you got to think a lot of them are thinking why would i buy how you know? ever 
However, okay. there are still movies that I always only want to see on the big screen. Okay. Like I went over over when I was down at Edmonton, yeah. I went and saw 1917 over on the big screen. Oh, nice. Now even on a 55 65 inch screen in my house with a with a nice sound system, no. No. Yeah. You need to see that movie big big screen. Yep. So yeah, so there's still I think there's still going to be movies like that, and that's why most of the box office is still only driven by huge tentpole movies. Yeah, because I don't need to see a small independent mumblecore movie on a big screen. I can watch that on a computer screen. That's yeah. fine. But 1917 or The Avengers or something like that, I want on the big screen with huge sound. Yeah, I will watch absolutely. a smaller movie if the big one's sold out, though. You know, oh, yeah. you go there, you're like, ah, <laughs> well, I'm already here. I'm already out of the, out of the house. Guess I'll go see The Artist in yeah. Theater 3. <laughs> hey, I saw The Artist in the theater. <laughs> did you? I did, yeah. I saw the what theater. was that experience like? <laughs> <laughs> it was black and white. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast where we cut out all the great music and you're left with the rest. Lecture hasn't watched this, but AJ and I have. It's the thing everybody's talking about, Tiger King. All right. Get it out of your system. I, you know what? And the, Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if you go to Joe Exotic TV, it's right there on YouTube. No. Oh. It's got 119,000 subscribers. I tried to Spotify a few of his songs. No luck. No luck, buddy. No luck. Well, here we go. <laughs> Joe Exotic. I saw a tiger. Sounds great. Tell all the hunters <laughs> to lay down their guns. I could picture the, the music video. Tell them that the tiger I wish that was him singing. Little bit of love. It's not. It's not. And it never was Let and it never will be. It's amazing. Um, so if you haven't watched the documentary, I mean, I'll give you five minutes to go watch it. Great. Um, it is a wild roller coaster of twists and turns and uh, watching awful people do awful things and be awful while making tons of money exploiting animals. That's basically what it's about. Yep, now, good. it's been hyped up like crazy. It, it was hyped up for about a week before I even watched it. And, you know, everybody's like, you got to watch this, got to watch this. It turned into uh, thousands of memes and all kinds of things. And, like, basically I knew what I was going to get into, some kind of true crime thing with a bunch of, like, kind of, like, really brash characters from America's seedy underbelly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you get. I mean, nothing, in, nothing actually in this docuseries shocked me it's pure america it's america at its purest form it's people making millions of dollars off the exploitation of something else that's what kind of america kind of is or the basis of america kind of is sure me. what's amazing is that you see these these people that can barely string two sentences together i say as i stumble over my words <laughs> um making millions of dollars it, it's it's that's flabberg that's the shocking part to me none of the behavior is shocking none of the people who are who like are if you saw them in a movie it's like that person couldn't possibly exist well they do um shocks me none not, of that not behavior so much shocks you me. see crimes yeah like they videotape yeah. them doing crimes yeah but yet some of them went unpunished of course carol Pretty baskin wild. being one of them she's yeah. like nothing happened Even to her jeff jeff Lowe didn't jeff get Lowe, nothing, nothing happened to him yeah the dude who was hired Alan. to kill the other dude, nothing happened whoa, to him. Oh, no spoilers, man. Oh, whatever. It's there's no there's no way to spoil any of this. I could I could lay it all out for you, and, and you'd be like, "What? Now nah, just watch it." And it's I don't want to watch it. I don't think you need to. No, and that's the thing. That's my review. I'm for moving it. for the more I learn about it, I'm moving further and, and further away. And that's the thing. Like I, I I went into it kind of knowing a little bit, but not really. Like the way it's boiled down in in meme form is like polygamist. T like polygamous tiger owner in a, a, a gay meth head, blah blah blah, and it's ran just like, for office. Yeah, briefly. it ran for <laughs> ran for governor. Got twenty percent of the vote. Ran, ran for president. Ran for president. Uh, um, and it's all just kind of like, oh wow, that sounds really like that's a like a, a juicy little morsel to make somebody go. That sounds really interesting. I'm going to watch it. And then you watch it, and you're just watching some of the worst people yeah. you've ever seen. Yeah do terrible things the and TV. make tons of money doing it. Mm. And the, the, and the only time at the end of the documentary, the seventh episode, does someone go, what's lost in all this is the animals, right? It takes like seven hours for anybody to be like, well, what about the tigers? Like there's, it focuses on a, a few different people that have parks, Carol Baskin, Joe exotic and bag of an antla, um, doc antla, doc antla, and they all have these sanctuaries, and between them have some, it's something in the range of like six or seven hundred big cats, yeah. or actually nearly a thousand big cats, lions, leopards, mostly tigers, 
ocelots, birds, birds lynx, reptiles, birds, all kinds of things. Because there, there's, there's no laws against private zoos in the U.S. In Canada, we crack down heartily on private zoos because it is so incredibly expensive to keep these animals that if you're not making millions of dollars a year like you would at like a, an actual zoo, right? Um, well, not an actual zoo because those are those are like subsidized. But um, if you're not making millions and millions of dollars to feed these animals and, and house them properly, then it's just abuse. Sixty thousand dollars a day, a day to feed them, to feed Good them. Lord. So Joe Exotic at one point because they couldn't afford to to do it is trucking in expired meat from Dude, Walmart. The Walmart once a week. program. Walmart program donating slightly expired meat. His the people that work there aren't getting paid enough, so they're pilfering the the meat from there as well. And then you feel bad for some of these people because some of these people were like, like looking at the bottom right, rock bottom, and they found a job and they found a purpose. Right. So there is that. There is some they're, sort of redeemable on, something. They're on a sh- slightly shinier rock. Yeah, slightly very shiny. close to very, the bottom. Very right. close to the bottom. But mm-hmm. with tigers. But, but yeah, yeah, that's right. And they get to pet tigers. And there's a couple of these people that are just like, you know, I, you know, I formed a relationship with these animals, and now I don't get to see them anymore because Joe Exotic's in prison. And oh. yeah, well, that's it, good. That everybody knew that. But he's like, I didn't know he, that. he's the one. At, at the end of it, you're like, he's the one that went to prison. Like he absolutely needed to go to prison. Yeah, because they all do. They all need to go to prison. But like he was the one that went. Ma- meanwhile, Carol Baskin is it probably murdered her husband. Yeah. And uh, like, it's. I don't even know where to begin. So how long is this guy in prison for? Uh, twenty-two, 20, 20, 20, 20 years. Twenty-two years. Twenty-two years. 22 years. Oh, so originally they, sentenced okay. to eighty. Yeah. So wow. they they tried to get him for like, uh, they tried to get him for hiring a hitman. Okay. To kill his rival. That's illegal? That's illegal. No. Yeah. Okay. You can't just talk about it. Um, well, you can't just talk about it. There has to be an exchange of money. Keeping for America yeah, yeah. moving forward. So that's, after, the way I that's exactly right. Let's thin the herd. Um, and then so after that, they got him for like ne- negligence and uh, cruelty to animals and selling cubs. Euthanasia. Euthanasia. No, that was Doc Atla. No, it was also Joe oh, was it they found oh, that's like right. Yeah, yeah. Or like that. Fifteen tigers that they found buried in his backyard. Skull, yeah. Doc Antler, the other guy, is is uh, it's pretty credible that he euthanized tiger cubs he had once they became crematorium. too big to be pet be petted and be in a petting zoo. Mm. And that's it. Just at the end of it, I wasn't the first couple of episodes. I was like, oh, uh, this is kind of crazy. I didn't again. The behavior didn't didn't really surprise me. By the end, I was just like, this is just sad. I don't like any of this. And I don't like that any of these people are being made into, like, characters for our easy consumption. Yeah. Like, I want them to go away, and I don't ever want to hear about them again. But they're going to be memes forever. For This is the... And, I mean, I get the response to it. This is the thing that kind of turned everybody's attention. Yeah. It's like, this is all we can think about is Which self-isolation is and all this. And then, all of a sudden, it's this. Yeah. And... If only Love is Blind had waited like another month oh my, or so. Can you imagine? Love is Blind would be huge. People would still have been is. fine. Yeah. And it was... It, <laughs> It's it still is pretty huge. In the, and yeah, and, and at the end of the day, all you're looking at is a bunch of uh, beautiful animals being completely exploited, living in cages. And like this is this is not this is not a new thing. Yeah. But this is kind of turning another eye onto it. I, I hope out of this comes like big cat protection laws in the U.S. where it's just like you cannot own a tiger. And like right. in the 70s, it was the Wild West, man. Everybody was buying a tiger. Like we have guys, a bylaw yeah, in town. That's right, because you can't have a lion. And and some guy bought like, oh, I bought my first tiger for 400 bucks. It's like, what? What a bargain. What a bargain for yeah. a tiger. So Slightly more than adopting a dog. And at the end, and it's a fact <laughs> that I actually knew uh, beforehand because of the Joe Rogan podcast, there are more big cats living in captivity in the U.S. than there are in the wild. Yeah. So five to 10,000 big cats or tigers, maybe just tigers? Five to, th- five to ten thousand. I heard big it cats expressed as tigers. As tigers, yeah, five to ten thousand tigers in captivity in the U.S. Yeah, and there's four thousand in the wild. It's yeah, disgusting. That is disgusting. And like this is it's peak America, man. Like this, that's the thing that that drives me the most nuts about it. It's peak America. The yeah. the only thing I kept thinking through the first few episodes is like, you know, there's such a thing as too much freedom. Yeah. Like we all want to be really Although, free. Other if, if they're in jail right now, like they, if they are. Were still well, free, no, one of them be is like, in jail. Yeah. That's 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 pretty ridiculous. No, a bunch of them are still free and still what? operating. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Carol Baskin, get them. Carol, ba- Carol Baskin still has his, has her sanctuary. Jeff Lowe still has his place. Oh, that's, like it's no, that's so no that they, and they paint this picture that they're all concerned about the cats. Yeah, right. No, like they, they, Jeff Lowe yeah, doesn't like go. This is their whole them. thing. Like, oh, we're here to conserve these animals and make sure yeah. that they last. They're there blah, to blah, breed blah. them so they can make money. Yeah, the documentary right. does a great job of showing even the one that's a sanctuary, quote yeah. unquote. 
uh, is is clearly it's not about the animals. No. It's about the money. It's about the fame. Yeah. It's about you know just being acknowledged as someone Power. cool. Yeah. It's, it's popularity. If it was a sanctuary, if if there wasn't any breeding going on, it would be slightly better. Because then you're just right. conserving animals. You're taking in animals that probably wouldn't survive in the wild. Because if right. they're, you know what I mean. Because if they're bred and yeah. and built and 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 grown in a sanctuary, they're probably not going to survive in the wild. Right. Yeah. So something has to be done with them. Yeah. Um, but not, but eventually you'd like to get to a point where that's just not even an issue. No, it's not. But right. I mean, the second you start breeding them, that's that's it. Like you yeah. you've taken you've taken that one step closer to complete exploitation, mm-hmm. and it just it, at the end I just was like I hate this. Yeah, I hate this. I hate everybody in it, and I wish I never watched it. Yeah, it's just, like, that's why it's, it's so all good. very it's all very well and good to laugh at people who were silly because Joe Exotic's a complete character. Yeah, he's also. He's also got like borderline personality disorder. Oh, it's he's not got a so- lot of things. He's got a lot of things. It's not something that should be emulated or like put on a pedestal at all. Like these people need help. I think though he'll be forgotten. I think he probably will too. Like next week we'll yeah. figure out something else. But it's just it's it's interesting that the hype I got hyped about it the first two episodes. By the time I was done, I could not stomach any more of it. Yeah. And no, I just I don't want to I don't ever want to watch it again. I know people who are like, I gotta watch it again. It's like why? No, no, I've once is good enough. Yeah. All right, fun. gentlemen, you've convinced me. Yes. You I'm watch. not going to watch it. I'll watch uh-huh. it. No. Nah, I'll watch it. No, absolutely nah, not. No, you don't need no. to. You really don't need to. I'm You're, on Westworld now. You are not. I got no time for anything the else. Thing, the thing, and uh, I, I get why it's so popular. It's just, I. you're not going to learn anything new. You're not going to learn anything good about people. That doesn't sway my decision. No, I know, but a, Come on. You're not going to learn anything good about anybody. You're just going to end up sad. Yeah. And like, it takes, like I said, seven hours for someone to go like, the animals, though. It's kind of sucks. It's like, yeah. <laughs> First episode, I was like, Is anybody going to talk about these tigers? Yeah. Like, because these tigers are living in small cages. And like, I think that's how it started. Yeah. I think the documentary started, it was a, a documentary about tigers. Yeah. And right. then this person started to dive into the world of these people and was Nuts. like, okay, no, we're shifting focus. Yeah. Right. Like, these people are crazy. Yeah. It it's, just doesn't sound like quite the distraction that I'm looking for. Yeah, fair enough. There's enough sadness going on right now. And it is yeah. sad. It is straight up sad. I'll go for happy. Okay, go for happy. So there's our review of Tiger King. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio, audience. Wheeler, AJ, and Lecture with you on your Monday morning, just talking about a little shopping. Have you guys done some shopping? Remember, you don't have to hoard or stockpile. I saw someone on my on my Facebook feed this morning saying, it's stockpile. There's a difference between stockpiling and hoarding. I was like, not really. Not really. Yeah. Also, you don't need to stockpile. Not right, right now. now. Supply chains are open. Supply chains are fine. The grocery stores are full and replete full of stuff. And maybe it they 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 uh, it runs down a little quicker, but still they're they're there. Although I did notice I was at uh, Trevor's Independent um, and Co-op because they didn't have uh, did a couple of different things. Uh, still uh, completely bereft of toilet paper. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, people are, I think they're, I actually think they're stocking it like a little bit more, uh, st- strategically now yeah. They get it in They kind of put a few out there, wait for it to go, put a few out there, wait for it to go. They're not restocking the whole show. You know, I actually finished a roll this morning Oh man! and I went, <laughs> I just had this little moment. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. I'm almost out of toilet paper. So, After this roll I have so and, then, and the other roll, there's only 30 rolls left. Yeah. <laughs> I had one of those big 24 packs like two months ago. I'm not even a quarter the way through this thing but yet i still pulled one sheet off and i went what do you poo every oh three days goodness. i'm an efficient wiper is what it is uh, efficient <laughs> wiper anyway um a lot of people out there on that covid19 diet though so <laughs> yeah maybe get some tp um yeah so we were talking about shopping and uh and, and how different it is it is now as well and just kind of reminding people keep that social distance or physical distance pardon me yep. you can be social from a little ways apart Another thing coming out though now is that like getting together with your friends and remaining physically distant isn't actually phys- like isn't actually what they're talking about. You yeah. know what I mean? Like a lot of people are still getting together and like, oh, we were across each other in the yard and we sat like you know six feet apart. It's like that's not what they want you to do. No. They still want you to just stay, preferably, preferably just stay, stay, stay the hell home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So uh, some of the things that that are kind of happy. I know we've been talking about little weird things today, but um, uh, the way we're celebrating birthdays. We're celebrating birthdays a little differently right now. We saw last week that uh, um, getting together and uh, uh, doing stuff for kids and things like that, mm-hmm. like putting the teddy bears in the windows and celebrating birthdays however you can, like rolling by and like honking your horn and making noise. I uh, got an invite to uh, a local's uh, B-Day. I won't out the person because they're turning 50. 
Yeah. Now, right? Old well, that ta- narrowed it down. Old Towner. Yeah. And uh, basically <laughs> invited everybody to just, uh, th- this is what they're asking. Join us in a parade in your car or on your bicycle at 7 p.m. to celebrate someone's 50th. Meet at the Cornerstone Church and then come loop around uh, Finley Point with your noisemakers, signs, and celebrations. Let's make it a surprise. Oh, damn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, Should have put that reading. first. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Should have put that part first. Should have put, it's a surprise. Before I tell you anything, it's a surprise. It's a surprise. Don't say this Don't on the radio. Anything. By the way, I just invited 160 people. Um, <laughs> so you know what? I don't think I ruined anything. It's still going to be an amazing thing. But it just, it kind of reminded me, like, we're we're all kind of adapting. It's amazing how quickly we adapt to all these things. That's a great idea. Yeah. So yeah. if you got a birthday coming up, maybe try to organize something like that for your birthday. And I mean... Uh, for that person's birthday, and like they ordered, they invited 160 people. I hope they get a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. And I just, I when I see it, a birthday invita- invitations like that, it's like who, who even likes 160 people? I don't even That's know. Any other people, know other people, yeah. nicer people than Some I. People I do. Do, yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. right? Yeah, there's socialites. People. I feel yeah. like there's 160 people that would go out for your birthday and probably your birthday. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, not, you... not I. Yeah. No, that's fine. And that's fine. You know why? You know why that's fine? Because I wouldn't do that for most people's birthday either. Oh, Even my go. closest friends, I'd be like, you know what? I'll see you when I see you. Yeah. Oh. And I think uh, I found the root of the problem here. Yeah, probably. I don't care. Yeah. Um, but I noticed the, there was a birthday planning group on uh, on Messenger yes. the other week. Yes. Uh, where some friends, yep. some of our some of our mutual friends Absolutely. were planning something for another mutual friend. And I couldn't help but notice last week, uh, all of a sudden it said, Jesse Wheeler has... Left the group. group. That's Whoa. right. That's right. <laughs> not declined. Not well. I mean, not going to make it. Hundred and fifty nine. It is really, really nice that everybody's getting together for everybody's birthday. That's great. And I'm not. I didn't leave because like no one would ever do that for me. It's part of it. Um, but <laughs> but it, like it's there's 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 people that there that you get invited to their birthday and you're like okay yeah cool yeah. I I'm not really close with that person right you know what I mean I yeah, like them I like yeah. them just fine sure. but I'm you know I'm not going to go. Buy a big gift for them and make a big deal about it. I didn't read too much into it. It's just this funny. Just say happy birthday. It's funny in a messenger thread yeah. how like definitive that looks. It's like this person has made the decision. Yeah. To leave this group. Say, I have left this group. Screw the rest of you. Well, no. I mean, I'm out. That's right. That's it's right. Such screw a bold everybody. comment it makes too. Like, but, it, but it doesn't. It shouldn't though because no. once you get the gist of it, I don't need a notification yeah. every time. Like. <laughs> 80 people in this group are like, hey, yeah, that sounds great. Okay, I'll do it. I'll also join. It's like a message, a message, message. It's like I'm getting notifications. Like I, li- I left the group. And then people, like, I mean, I know you're joking, but there are other people who are probably yeah. like, oh, oh, I guess oh. This, 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 this. I'd okay. say the number one well, comment yeah. after that is, oh, did we upset him? <laughs> yeah. I get that every time. Did like, oh, what did we say person? to him? Well, Rest is assured, he okay? Rest assured, that came up. The, I'm sure it did. <laughs> the point of all of this is it's wonderful to see people adapting so quickly in order to celebrate something as simple as a birthday. Yeah. Uh, especially a 50th. Yeah. Surprise over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> always. Always put there that can a be a couple fiftieths coming up in when Old Town in the radio <laughs> this That's weekend. Right. That's right. <laughs> Always pre-read your copy. Oh, for goodness' sake! That, well, this person's <laughs> probably not listening anyway, so I mean, oh, there you go. Perfect. There you go. Perfect. Exactly. Um, Sometimes it works out. It's very, it's very cool. And I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm interested to see w- uh, what other ideas people come up with for, like, because everybody's being very creative in how they adapt to these things. I think yeah. Northerners are well equipped for it. Right, because I remember going like it's minus to a, sixty. We're not going out yeah. anywhere. What do yeah. we do for fun? Right, yeah. like going to a big city. They they were they had to go do something that was already predetermined. Yes, and up here you were just like, well, it's, it's cold, cold and there's nothing cold. around. Yeah. So I guess I'll just go make up this game with my friends. It's yeah. gonna be stupid, but we'll have the right. best time ever. Exactly. So I think this is like we're quite well equipped for this. And I mean, there's there's another thing that I brought up with with Lecter actually last week, and he said that sounds stupid. Don't ever say that to me again. <laughs> yeah. Let's and I said, do okay, it. Let's <laughs> do it. I felt and, I, and I've, I've seen a, a, a few other people post about this, and a few other people playing it. It's something I played in, in high school when you had a car and there was nothing to do in town. Right? You play car tech. Oh. So people are going around playing car tech. So what you do, you get together in cars, obviously, and get to one place. And then one person goes and hides somewhere in the city, sends a text message out saying some sort of clue. And the first person to get there, you know, gets the next person that's it, I guess. I don't know. 
Um, I can't really remember. Doesn't but matter. We, you we make it up as all you the time. We used to play this all the time. That's and awesome. I brought it up with Lecter, and he's like, that sounds like a waste of gas. Wah, wah. Oh. <laughs> Financially, <laughs> that's just irresponsible. No, but that's, like, I mean, that's Lecter's way of being nice and saying, like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to leave my I don't, house. I don't yeah, I have, to, I have to find a moral reason, like that's a right. higher exactly. reason why I can't <laughs> participate yeah, can't just, as much yeah, as I like you. The environment, Jesse, you ever heard of it? Yeah. And you know what? My argument to that is gas is the cheapest it's been in 30 years. It's like what, what we don't we don't care about climate change anymore. Nobody cares. Yeah, we've no, given not up. Not really. Oh, okay. No. Okay. All this right. Is kind Nobody of cares about climate change. Have you seen the environment? It's doing great after two weeks of people not going out. So let's, let's even that let's out. Let's balance that out. Let's play some car tag. <laughs> Plus, you've got you've got an EcoBoost engine, baby. It 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 burns very very little gas. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. And it, and I it, turn it, it off. It only yeah. <laughs> it only spits out pure water. The mornings at the cabin podcast. Been a calm couple of days. COVID-19 wise, so we're just kind of, you know, just kind of relaxing a little bit, Yeah, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Shoulders feel good? Oh, my my shoulders feel terrible. Oh. I mean, relax. Well, I'm, tr- I'm, I'm relaxed, but I've just been sitting around a lot. So. I'd offer you a massage, but physical distancing. I need someone's physical touch. Mm. I, I need it. I you need could it. wrap your hands in Lysol wipes. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That'll provide great lube for my back. Anyway, <laughs> and it disinfects. <laughs> and it disinfects. Disinfect my back, buddy. It's covered in stuff. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Okay, great. Um, something really nice this morning. Actually, we just posted up on the mornings of the cabin Facebook page. Um, today would have been the first day back after spring break. So ah, we're supposed to be back in, in oh, class today. Okay, I didn't realize so that. So the the teachers at Sir John released a little video. Uh, wonderful stuff. And just kind of letting in, letting the students know how they feel about what's going on, and uh, that, that they miss them, and that they're staying. Hopefully, they're staying healthy. So, right. it was set to uh, "Lean on Me" by Bill Withers, and it's just a, a series of little. Uh, mo- it's a montage of videos. Some "Lean on Me." It's yeah. not very physical mm. distancing. Yeah. encouragement, okay. messaging. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Well, we can take them to task <laughs> later, but for now, the message is clear. <laughs> Lean away from me. It should. <laughs> yeah. Lean away. <laughs> So what? you can't sneeze. <laughs> Lean oh. on me, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Don't actually do it. <laughs> that would be wrong. Um, so uh, wonderful video. Ch- check it out on the mornings of the Kevin Facebook page. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a montage of uh, of, uh, of clips from teachers giving the thumbs up, waving hi. Some people speaking say, "Hey, li- we-, we really miss you." Because I mean, that's that- that's the job, right? The yeah. job is, I mean. I'm sure some some teachers are who maybe not in the video are like I am so glad that we are not wearing glasses right now. But I, I, I mean, a lot of them are probably like <laughs> that's what the thumbs up are for. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just like yay! I'm so glad I don't get to see you Stay right now. Stay in your home, Mr. Johnson has left the thread. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Mr. Johnson yeah. leave the thread? Oh, is he upset? Did you say upset? something we offended him? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just doesn't miss the kids. That's right. Uh, if there is a Mr. Johnson and Sir John, we don't mean you. We were just picking a generic white person name. Okay. Um, so it's it's a really nice video. Go check it out if you can. And uh, just uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is the first day for parents to be like, okay, what do we do now? Uh, oh boy. This oh is boy. harder huh. than I thought it would <laughs> this be. Is, uh, yeah, and we're it's eight thirty. The kids aren't even up yet, and the parents are like, <laughs> let them sleep. What's today gonna bring? Um, <laughs> I've seen, although I have seen a lot of parents like um, having plans, like they put out a schedule like basically trying to keep that sense of normalcy for the kids like they're doing a day like you get you know you start you start doing you do reading at 9 30 for an hour you do math at 10 30 for an hour go outside for 20 minutes blah 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 all that stuff so I that's think that was part cool. of it from the teachers too they do either online or they would just send out lesson plans yes. for you to follow yeah which i think is pretty cool i know homeschoolers and, and normally don't usually do a full day because they, because it's just one on one. Because they're so lazy. Yeah, because they're so you know, right. you know. Yeah, I do know. Because <laughs> it's so concentrated, so you That's don't, right. you're not doing it seven hours a day, right? <laughs> yeah, you can do yeah. it like five hours a day, and then they yeah. all do sports or other things. You know what I mean sports? Yeah, or like life skills. Learning, or, yeah. learning the theremin. Okay, it's time for laundry. <laughs> learning the theremin or learning a fourth language. Homeschoolers, Ugh, homeschoolers. overachievers, <laughs> overachievers. Um, yeah, so uh, that, yeah, it's a it's a it's a nice way to kind of uh, let everybody know that they're thinking of them. Yeah. And again, not all teachers involved, I imagine, and not all the students getting that message either. It's just like I really miss you, except yeah, for you, God, Chad. I'd love to see my teachers <laughs> like, during this dark time where no, I don't I mean, go to I'm school. Sure, I'm sure some students are are very they're they're upset. 
today, right? Because sure. I mean, you got you got grade twelve students. The 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 the, the, the class has been canceled till fall. I mean, I'm sure there's there's obviously things in place. I think what what will probably happen is that the whatever grade they have now is what grade they will get, which kind of sucks for people that are just about to be in the playoffs, uh, right on the edge of the playoffs. I'm right on the edge of that C <laughs> to get into uni. Can you just bump my grade up? Yeah, a little that's. Bit? I'm very curious to see how that all plays out. Because departmentals yeah. have been have been canceled, right? Yeah, so they're like, not going to do departmental. How does that things. work? Just where you're at right now. I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, if there's going to be some virtual learning, I'd love it's to hear crazy. about it. I'm, I'm sure one of our reporters is on it right now, figuring out exactly what's going on. And if they aren't, well, get on it. Um, we all want to know. Um, and, and how they're going to continue the rest of the year, because there's still a bunch of the year left. you got April, mm-hmm. May, and June. you got three months left of, this, of, the, of the season. Yeah. yeah. You know? We're right there on the couch. In your grade the 12. That's the time you, the grade 12. you really got to figure everything out. Like, okay, I need to up right. all my grades. Exactly. Right yeah. now. And a lot of people were like, maybe wait until, like, you know what? I'm just going to lay back until after spring break, and then I'm really going to give her. <laughs> and it hard. <laughs> That's too bad. Yeah. That's Whoops. too bad. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've, I've, I know that some colleges are doing that, just like you're taking the grade that you had when you left. And a lot of people are upset about that. It's just like, okay, well. Yeah, what, but what I have my I just, hardest courses. Yeah, my hardest courses. <laughs> I had all the like, easy ones. I had a midterm coming up that I was going to smash man i was just really tired all of november well i mean it's tough just, just come back up. after christmas and you're like oh god i'm so tired yeah yeah, yeah. all the way through march yeah <laughs> yeah tough lessons yeah absolutely right. hey. Li- life lesson life lesson we're all learning life lessons that's right that sometimes the school of the world <laughs> yeah that's right sometimes a pandemic happens and you should be prepared. That's right. You should have at least six to six months to a year's worth of salary saved, mm-hmm. so that if a pandemic happens, you don't have to go on dole. Uh, you should have a, you know you should have all your school books memorized. Yeah, yep. yeah. You all should of finish your grade twelve before Christmas. Yeah. 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 Just hell, in case. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. What the hell were you doing yeah. not finishing up grade 12 before Sitting this all hands. happened? <laughs> you know, and, and you know, if you have anybody in your life that's saying that about economics, like people are like, well, what am I supposed to do about money? It's like, well, you should have been prepared. You should have personal responsibility to have money saved up. You have tell money. them that's what they sound like. You sound like an ass. Those people have money. Yeah, those, exactly. <laughs> it's only it's always people who have money or have a guaranteed job or, or, or like are still getting paid that are like, yeah, you really should have taken some personal responsibility and saved up more money. This yeah. one's on you, yeah. bud. This one's on you. Yeah. You should have known that there's a pandemic coming. Here's the thing. Now that we know that this can happen, there will be people that do that. Well, probably. well and there's going to be bonds, too. There'll probably be bonds that you could buy at the at the bank where it's just like pandemic bonds. <laughs> 20 bucks a month. And this will this will save you. Uh, this will get you some money. Yeah, I mean, right? it's, you should be doing that for a retirement plan. But yeah, no, my retirement plan is exactly what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want it to happen worse. It's just like, okay, there's it. The world's over, yeah. and I can now retire. Um, anyway, nice message from Sir John <laughs> Teachers. <laughs> Why, kind of, why do we have to ruin everything? We keep on, we keep on going off on a bunch of different. <laughs> yeah, camps. that was a good it's one. Fine. That was quite good. a spiral. <laughs> that's right. I love to spiral. Oh, my mental health. Um, that's gonna do it for more than the cat. But I think, I think that's where we end off this thing. Uh, we're just kind of rambling at this point. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca and by following the Mornings at the Cabin Facebook page.